Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Sharif Al Gamal uh, talking to you again about uh, reinforced concrete design. In this lecture, we are going to continue our uh, work about solid slabs, part two. Uh, it will be one way solid slabs. And in this lecture, I'm going to give you a solved example number one about simply supported one way slab. In this uh, example here, uh, it says the slab shown below is to be designed to carry a live load of three kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so you have a slab here supported on beams with a span for 4.5 meters. It carries a live load of three kilonewton per meter square plus floor finishes and ceiling loads of one kilonewton per meter square. Then we have the concrete compressive strength 30 megapascal, F yield is 460 megapascal, and it tells us to assume one hour fire resistance and mild exposure. Okay, so what are the steps that we should follow here in our design? If you still remember from the previous lecture, the first step, we have to take a step of one meter. This is for any slab. Then we have to go to the second step about the initial proportioning. So we have to find the thickness of the slab. So for the initial proportioning, table 3.9, we from this one, we get the basic span to depth ratio. So let's go to table 3.9 again and check. Here in this problem, we have assembly supported slab. Okay, so simply supported, it means this span to depth ratio will be 20. Basic span to effective depth ratio is equals to 20. So we'll take this one and it will be 20. And then we assume a modification factor of 1.3. Then to get the minimum effective depth equals the short span, which is the only span that we have here, 4.5 meters, divided by basic span to depth ratio, which is 20. We put it here multiply it by the modification factor. Modification factor is 1.3. So all of this will give us a value of 173 millimeter. In this case, you have you can round it to 170 or 180 millimeter. It's uh, optional to do whatever you want because at the end, you have to check if your solution is satisfying deflection, satisfying cracking problems, and also ultimate limit state. So once you get the depth, okay, of the slab, effective depths, you have to also get the cover. To get the cover, we get it from two values, table 3, 3 and table 3, 4. Table 3, 3 is for mild exposure. So from table 3, 3, and if we have a concrete strength 30 megapascal and mild exposure, let's go. Mild exposure with concrete strength 30 megapascal. So how much is the cover here? According to the code, it is 25 millimeter so we'll take it as 25 millimeter from the first table then table 3.4 about fire you have one hour fire resistance so let's go back here one hour fire resistance so i will go here and then it is a floor so the value will be 20 millimeter so from the second table 3.4 it is 20 millimeter so i have 25 from the durability table, I have 20 from the fire resistance table, so I'll take the maximum of them. So the nominal cover will be in this case 25 millimeter. So how to get the total H of the slab? The H of the slab equals D plus cover plus diameter over two. So we always assume the diameter as 10 millimeter diameter. So in this case, the D that we took 180, plus the cover we found is 25 millimeter and diameter over two equals five. So this will give us a total edge of the slab, a total thickness of the slab of 210 millimeter. By getting this one, we finish the initial or the, the initial proportioning uh, of the slab. Then we go to the second step, how to final proportioning and start by getting loads. Okay, for the loads, we have dead load and we have live load. So the dead load will include the self-weight of the slab. How to get the self-weight of the slab? Self-weight of the slab equals the thickness of the slab times 
the density of the concrete, okay? Thickness of the slab, we get it in uh, meter. So we divide this 210 divided by 1,000 to get it as meter because we need the value to be kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so the self weight equal the thickness in meter multiplied by 24 kilonewton per meter cube. This is the density of reinforced concrete. Uh, so it will give you a value of 5 kilonewton per meter square. Then floor finishes. It is given in the problem as one kilonewton per meter square. To get the total dead load, get the submission of this value and that value. Okay, so get the submission here. Five plus one equals six. So this is the total dead load. Then you have a live load of three kilonewton per meter square given in the problem. So to get the ultimate load, the total ultimate load equals what? 1.4 times dead load, which is six plus 1.6 times live load, which is three. So it gives you a value of 13.2 kilonewton per meter square. Usually this value is something between 10 and 20 kilonewton per meter square, okay? Then this is kilonewton per meter square, but you need to solve for the slab as a beam. So you need the load as kilonewton per meter. And because we take a strip of one meter, so you just multiply this by one meter, so it will be the same value. So you don't need to make this step at all, but just to let you know that this load, which is 13.2 kilonewton per meter square, it will be the same value that I'm going to use it as kilonewton per meter because we take a strip width of one meter. Okay, so this is the load, 13.2 kilonewton per meter. How to get the bending moment? This is assembly supported. Okay, it was assembly supported. Here, let's draw it. This is the beam. And you have assembly supported. Let's assume you have any support here, another support here. Uh, let's use it as, for example, pin support or whatever. And then you have a load here of 13.2. Okay, this load. Okay, you have a load here. 13.2 kilonewton. So how much is that? bending moment here, the maximum bending moment. This is like a basic case of uh, structural analysis. So if you have a load with a span L, so the moment will be WL square over eight. You don't need to use co coefficients or anything in this case, because this is a determined structure. You can get the moment WL square over eight. So the W is 13.2 times 4.5 square over eight. So it will give us a value of 33.4 kilonewton meter per meter. Okay, this value here for each meter, okay, because we designed this for meter. And the reinforcement that we will get, it will be also per meter, okay. Then let's remove this and move next. Okay. Now we'll go to the step of design. As I told you for the one-way solid slab, the design will be only for one direction, which is always the short direction. And we call this is the main steel. So the bending moment that we calculated in the previous one, which is 33, we are going to use the equation as a code to design. So as usual, we calculate the K capital equals M over FCUVD square. The M is the moment that you got it, and it should be multiplied, should be multiplied by 10 to the power 6, divided by FCU, the concrete compressive strength, times B is always 1,000 millimeter, a strip of 1 meter, times D square. And don't forget the square. So the value is very small, 0 0.034, less than 0 0.156. It means this is a single enforced section. I don't need to have a compression steel reinforcement. Then the second step is Z over D equals 0 0.5 plus square root of 0 0.25 minus K that you calculated here divided by 0 0.9. Uh, it is equals 0 0.96, which is greater than 0 0.95. The code is saying don't take this value more than 0 0.95. So in this case, the Z will be taken as 0 0.95 D. So it will give us a value of 171 millimeter. The last step, you have to calculate the reinforcement. Area of the steel reinforcement equals 
moment divided by 0.95 F yield times Z. Z is already here. F yield is given as 460. So we get the area steel equals 447 millimeter square per a strip of one meter. This reinforcement, we call it AS required. The required steel reinforcement. Okay, but we have to provide the steel. Okay, so you will check, you will find that if you use T10 space that 150 millimeter center to center, it will give you a S provided of 523. When you choose a steel reinforcement, you should choose area of the steel reinforcement at least greater than AS required. So this is, we call it AS required. This is a required from the equation. And AS provided, this is an area of the steel you already provided uh, per meter, okay? Then you finish the design for the main steel, short span. Now we need to check for the long span. And as I told you, for the long span, we don't design, we just use minimum. We call it distribution steel. Okay, because usually it is very minor bending moments, so we neglect all of that. And we design only for the short direction. And for long direction, we use minimum steel reinforcement. Where, from where we get the minimum steel reinforcement, as I explained in the previous lecture, table 325. So we go to table 325. Okay, you have here uh, point number C for rectangular cross section, solid slabs. If you have an F field of 460 Newton per millimeter square, this is the reinforcement ratio, minimum reinforcement ratio, 0.13%. So you will say 100 AS over AC equals 0.13%, then you will be able to get the A area of the steel. Let's see this together, which is 0.13% B times H. So AS minimum, 0.13 times B, which is 1,000 times H, which is 210 divided by 100 gives us 273 millimeter square. And again, for the slabs, we have to change this one from just an area to choose diameter and spacing. So it will give us a diameter T10 spaced at 250 millimeter center to center and AS provided 314 greater than 273. By doing this, you finish the reinforcement, but this is not the end of the design. You need now to make some checks. You need to check for deflection, you need to check for shear, and you need to check for cracking. So how to check for deflection? We have to calculate the value of M over BD square, and the M here is the moment for maximum positive moment. So it is 33.4 times 10 to power 6 divided by BD square. It gives us this value, okay? From table 3.10, we have to calculate the stress in the steel reinforcement. At it can be calculated from this equation, 2 over 3 F yield times AS required divided by AS provided. AS required, it was 447, AS provided 523, and beta B, we take it as 1. So this will give us a stress in the steel reinforcement of 262 Newton per millimeter square. From this value and that value, we will go and substitute them into the equation of modification factor, which is this equation here. And once we did that, okay, we calculate the M. Here, we substituted Fs by the values that we got it from here. We substituted M over BD square with 1.03. So we got a value of 1.48, which is less than two. Everything is fine. So as a final check, we have to check the limiting span to depth ratio and compare it to actual span to depth ratio. Limiting span to depth ratio equals the Values that you have it uh, from table 3.9, okay, basic span to depth ratio times the M that you calculated here. So it will be 20 for simply support span times M 1.48 equals 29.6. How about the actual span to depth ratio equals the span is 4,500, 4.5 meter divided by the depth which is a 180 millimeter. So it gives us a value of 25. This value is less than the limiting span to depth ratio, which is 29.6. It means it's okay. It means the deflection is safe. So you can move now to checking shear. For a checking shear, this is showing again the slab with the load that we already calculated at the first step, 13.2 kN per meter. 
Okay, so how much it will be the reaction here? The reaction equals W times L over two. So the shear at the center line equal W L over two. How about the shear at the face of the support? Because this will be the critical section to check if the shear is greater than the maximum shear or not. So at the face of the support, the shear here equals the reaction, which is 13.2 times 4.5 divided by two, which is the reaction minus 13.2 times this distance, which is half of the width of the support. In this case, 0.23 divided by two, by assuming that the width of the beams that we have it here, 230 millimeter. So it will give us a value of 28.2 kilonewton. Okay, this is a shear force. And this is again, everything is per meter, a strip of one meter. Then we have to calculate the shear stress at the face of the support. It will equal to the shear force divided by B times D. Shear force is 28.2. And don't forget to multiply by 1,000 because we needed to have it in Newton. This one is a kilonewton. To multiply by 1,000, it will be in Newton. And divided by B, which is 1,000 times D, which is 180, it will give us a value, very small value, 0.157 Newton per millimeter square. This is the shear stress at the face of the support. We need to compare this with the ultimate shear. Ultimate shear stress allowed by the code is the lesser of two values, 0.8 square root of FCU or five, which is would be governed by this value. It comes from 0.8 square root FCU. Since V, which we calculated less than V max or V ultimate, it means the shear maximum, the shear is not exceeding the maximum shear stress. That's fine. But we need now to compare it with the VC, the shear carried by the concrete. Okay, from table 3.8, VC equals 0.79 times 100 AS over BD to power one over three times 400 over D, all of this divided by gamma M. Okay, this equation from the code, you can get from table 3.8. And the, you have here also some conditions that 100 AS over BD should be less than or equals to three. If it is greater than three, just, just take it three. It, everything is still fine, but just take it as three. But in slabs, usually it will be less than three. You don't have a problem here. So in this case, it is 0.29. You put 0.29 here between these brackets to power one over three, and then 400 over D, again, it should be greater than one, and in slaps, you will have it always greater than one. Don't forget that this gamma M is 1.25 for shear, so you can get the VC. But this VC is calculated based on a concrete strength of 25. In our case here, the concrete strength was 30 megapascal in this example. So for 30 megapascal, we need to multiply this VC that we calculated here by FCU divided by 25 to power one over three. Once we did that, this value will increase a little bit to be 0.45 Newton per millimeter square. This is VC, which is the shear carried by the concrete. So we have to compare the shear, actual shear, with the shear carried by the concrete. We can see that the shear here is much less than the VC. It means the concrete will be able to resist this shear without uh, needing any shear reinforcement, so it means the shear will be safe. And, and keep in mind that in most solid slabs, you, will, you are not going to face a problem in shear. Always the shear will be safe, but you have to check this and don't be surprised that the shear value here is very small. You should be surprised if you have a big value here and the shear is not safe, maybe check your calculation because you may have done any mistake. So now we have to check again to move to checking cracking. And as I told you in the previous lecture that checking cracking by the BS code, it goes through two methods. We have to check the area of the steel reinforcement to be greater than the minimum or be within the limits. And also the spacing also should satisfy the limits by the code. For the area of the steel reinforcement, we have to check the minimum and the maximum from the code. The minimum is 0.13% BH. And here, the maximum 4% of the BH. So this is the minimum and this is the maximum. We have to be sure that the steel reinforcement that we are providing is more than the minimum and less than the maximum. So the area that we have it for the steel provided in the main direction was 523. You can see it is greater than the minimum. 
And again, for the distribution steel, it is 314. It is greater than the minimum. So it means it is fine. Okay, let's, uh, if you ask me, like if, if the area of the steel here or here, usually maybe for the distribution steel, sometimes you have a required area of the steel which is much less than the ASC minimum. So in this case, if you have the required steel less than the minimum, you have to increase it and take it as the minimum. So the limit is the minimum. Don't go less than the minimum or you will not be satisfying the cracking requirements by the code. Okay, now we found that it is okay for the reinforcement greater than the minimum. And of course, it will be less than the maximum in case of the slabs. Then we have to check for the spacing. According to the code, the spacing is lesser of three times D or 750 millimeter. So the 3D will govern, it will give us 450 millimeter, 540 millimeter. And you can see here the spacing, it was 150 and 250, which is less than the maximum spacing. Okay, so this is the maximum. Don't go more than for 540. And we can see that for the main steel and for the distribution steel, it is within the limit, less than the maximum. So in this case, we satisfied the cracking requirements. Also in the anchorage, how to extend the bar after the center line of the support. Since the V is less than VC over two, okay, we found that the V is much, very, very small. It is even, it was less than VC, even less than VC over two. So the anchorage length will be the greater of 30 millimeter or end bearing divided by three. The end bearing divided by three will give us a 77 millimeter. So this will be the anchorage length behind the center line of the support. Okay, so this drawing is showing us this length here. It is greater of if the V is less than 0.5 VC. The code is saying this distance should be the greater of BS divided by three or 30 millimeter, which is bigger. Okay, so the bigger in this case or in most cases, it will be the BS divided by three. The last step here is to make the detailing of reinforcement. It means to draw uh, a reinforcement on a drawing plan, and sometimes sections uh, are also required, but mainly it will be the plan. So this was the shortest band, and the longest band it was not given to us. This is very long, just I took part of that one. So we found that the main steel, which is in the 4.5 meters, was T10 based at 150 millimeter, which we can see it here as this bottom line here. Usually the main steel, we put it at the bottom. Then at the top layer, we will have the distribution steel or the steel in the longitudinal direction. T10 is based at 250 millimeter. It will be like as these dots here that we'll see it above the bottom layer. You should be uh, keep in mind that the spacing in the short direction should be less than the spacing in the long, long direction if you are using the same diameter. Because always you will have reinforcement in the short direction greater than or equal to the reinforcement in the long direction. Under no way you will have reinforcement in the long direction greater than the reinforcement in the, long, the short direction. This is the end of uh, this lecture. We went through an example of simply supported one-way slab. Uh, thank you and see you in a coming video. Bye.